Hello and welcome to the EDB test of the new WK-10 rocket engine. This engine was designed by Werner von Kuhrmann in an attempt to replace the more expensive RL-10 engine that is produced by Pratt & Whitney. And so this is meant as a second stage engine, however its, its performance figures are substantially different from the RL-10. Of course the EDB could not use the same system as the RL-10 because it would be infringement of uh, patent rights and of course the fuel injector and other components could not be imitated and so a brand new fuel injector, brand new components had to be fabricated in order to make this engine. Uh, it has a substantially larger pressure than the RL-10 and there are three variants that are going to be tested today. This one is at 2000 PSI which is a chamber pressure that is six times the pressure of the original RL-10 though not quite as much as later variants. Okay, here we go. The engine is lit. This is an uh, upper stage engine burning hydrogen and oxygen and so there is only a minor flame. This is not the optimal altitude for this engine. And we see the structural temperature going up quite dramatically and, and unacceptably. And, and we have engine fla failure. We have engine failure. Um, this was the most risky test at 2000 PSI, way higher than, than the original RL-10, though, though not quite as high as the space shuttle main engines, which also burn liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Uh, they run at 3000 PSI, which is pretty much the, the limit of uh, technology. Uh, this was taking advantage of modern materials design, but clearly those materials were not good enough to, to maintain that kind of pressure. Uh, with such a light engine. This is the test of the WK-10 1800 PSI version. This is a downrated version from the 2000 PSI version that exploded earlier. Uh, this of course provides less thrust and also a lower surface ISP than the 2000 PSI version. So those are its drawbacks but hopefully uh, with the lower chamber pressure it will be able to sustain itself without increasing the structural temperature to a point where the materials fail. It should be noted that the mass of these engines uh, is comparable to the original RL-10 and so in order to allow for the higher chamber pressure there is reduced fuel flow, reduced mass flow into the chamber and so that is the compromise that was made to allow for the higher chamber, chamber pressure but uh, not entirely sure that that is uh, sufficient at this point. We'll see. And the engine is lit. Certainly the temperature is going up uh, much more moderately than before but it's still still dangerously high and going higher at a very alarming rate. This engine would have a sea level ISP higher than the RL-10 but a vacuum ISP lower than it so it could be used for low altitude service if if it could stop going up in temperature here and even at these temperatures I don't think it can run for the full duration of the test which is three minutes uh, the the fuel is for three minutes here and indeed the engine has failed the uh, test of the 1800 PSI engine has failed and uh, that leaves the EDB with one engine variant left that's the 1600 PSI version and uh, we will take you to that in a moment. And here we are with the third engine fabricated for Werner von Kerman's RL-10 replacement test, WK-10-1600 PSI version. This version of course has much lower thrust than the original RL-10 and uh, half the thrust of the RL-10-B2 variant. Uh, its ISP at sea level is higher than the RL-10, but its vacuum ISP is substantially lower. The RL-10s range from 444 to 464 ISP in vacuum, and so this will be less efficient there. But uh, it has a decent mass. It is, uh, according to Werner von Kerman, cheap to manufacture for the EDB, and so we'll have to see. It specs, uh, because of its high chamber pressure, higher than the RL-10 of course, its specs are actually more comparable to larger li uh, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen rockets uh, like the space shuttle main engines. Those, 
that uh, run between 2,000 and 3,000 PSI, uh, like the RS-27s. And here we go. Uh, structural temperature is still going up quite quickly here. The limit is uh, 1,700 degrees Celsius, but that is not where we want this to be. Uh, a different sound here seems perhaps that's a good sign at this point. Um, Yes, uh, if we want this engine to be able to relight, it can't get this hot. Uh, because, of course, the heat damages the components, and attempting to relight it after uh, it's been so damaged uh, could be a dangerous activity, especially if, uh, for whatever payload happens to be there, including humans, if, uh, or Kerbals, for that matter. So, so yes, uh, we... we I don't think the EDB is looking for the temperatures to go this high at all. However, the, the temperature seems to be stabilizing here. Again, it's a three minute engine test. That's far uh, lower than the normal burn time of an RL10 engine. But uh, first things first, according to Werner von Kerman here. And indeed, uh, 1226 degrees Celsius, very, very high, but, but flattening out here. If this engine test is successful, uh, it's uncertain whether they will attempt to uh, produce a more downrated version that can relight itself, or whether they will put this version into service. It would be difficult to see how a downrated version will be would be good because the thrust is so low already. On the plus side, this uh, vindicates the fuel injector design that uh, was produced by the engineers, and so it looks like the injector plate is a uh, good design here, and perhaps uh, increasing the mass flow and decreasing the chamber pressure will allow this engine to be more more useful and safe. Hanging out at 1236 degrees Celsius here. To be clear, the actual uh, combustion temperature is much higher than this. The combustion temperature is uh, on the order of, I believe, 3200 degrees Celsius. Okay, uh, we're, we're getting close to shutdown here. Five more seconds in the burn. And engine shutdown. Temperature going down, engine cooling off. I believe uh, the EDB will be calling that a successful test of the WK10 1600 PSI variant. And this might be the WK10A if they decide to put it into service. So, uh, with that, uh, thank you for watching this coverage of the WK-10 engine test from the EDB. We hope you enjoyed our coverage. And with that, this is the EDB, signing off.